In the 1850s, the Prairie State was headed toward becoming the greatest agricultural power in the Union. It was a time of dreams, big ideas of hope and a vision for the future. In order to reach these lofty ideals, many believed a proper education would be necessary. But the scarcity of trained, devoted teachers was impeding progress. Statistics on the literacy showed the need for teachers who could teach uh, boys and girls to read and to write and to perform simple mathematical operations, skills that they could use as farmers, as bookkeepers and as housewives. The traditional curriculum with its emphasis, with its really heavy emphasis on Latin and Greek and theology and higher mathematics uh, drew the ire of several educators and certain practical farmers. They believed that if the state of Illinois was going to meet the challenge of settling the frontier they needed new educational programs and they needed a more adequate way to train teachers. So they decided to take action. Thirty-two of the state's educators issued a call for an educational convention. Teachers, superintendents, school commissioners, and friends of education were all invited to a meeting at the Methodist Church in Bloomington. The Illinois State Teachers Association, which is now the Illinois Education Association, was formally established. A committee was appointed to send a draft asking the legislature to make conditional ventures to aid communities that wanted to establish a normal school for teacher education. Charles Hovey, president, and Simeon Wright, president-elect of the association, were immediately appointed to the committee. Daniel Wilkins, principal of the Female Institute of Bloomington, and William H. Powell, the newly elected state superintendent, were also selected to serve. The Honorable Samuel W. Moulton was selected to take over the management of the normal school bill. Governor William Bissell, long favored the creation of a normal school, signed the bill into law, and the first milestone was reached. The ink had only been dry five days on Governor Bissell's signature when competition for the school began. The act named 15 men to consist of a corporate board that would be known as the Board of Education of the State of Illinois. Committees were set up to deal with issues such as the location, uh, course of study, uh, the buildings, even the officers of the school. Charles Hubby, who had been named to the board, was a member of the Committee on Location, and his mission was to secure the school for Peoria. Jesse Fell wanted to locate the school in North Bloomington. He gathered together several prominent Bloomington businessmen. These men, ever alert to the cultural and economic advantages that a university could offer, donated cash and land in their bid for securing the normal school. Everhart would go to Chicago and talk to the Board of Education and say, uh, essentially start promoting the idea of Bloomington as a site, and then essentially Fell would go to Peoria and find out exactly what was going on. So Eberhard heads off to Chicago and Fell goes to Peoria. Not a particularly easy trip. Fell essentially would have had to take his horse and buggy to El Paso because that would have been the closest place to catch the railroad, the old Peoria and Aquaqua line, take it over to Peoria and attend the public meetings. Hovey was at that meeting and probably knew why Fell was there. But as things go, he didn't pay a lot of attention to that and Fell listened in and learned that Peoria had determined that it could put 80,000 bucks together in order to attract the university. And that was a very big number in those days. As Fell drove home that night, he made plans for raising Bloomington's bid. McLean County citizens had already pledged $50,000 in cash and lands, but more would be needed. McLean County Commissioners A.J. Merriman of Bloomington, Milton Smith of Pleasant Hill, and Hiram Buck of Leroy pledged that they would appropriate from the Swamp Land Fund an amount equal to that subscribed by individual citizens. 
This brought the total bid to $100,000. The location committee was scheduled to arrive in Bloomington Wednesday morning. The weather was unpleasant, raw and cold. Water stood in puddles and the mud was ankle deep and slippery. Six tracts of land had been offered as possible sites for the school. The committee inspected the sites east of town first. Well, today if you're driving down East Locust Street and going up near the high school, you're driving through the area that was an east side slough. Essentially, is a low, muddy area. And in order to show the eastern location, the uh, potential site that was on east part of town, they had to go through this slough. And so that was not a really a good idea. After a gratuitous luncheon at the Pike House, the city's finest hostelry, the party set out for the junction where the Illinois Central and Chicago and Alton Railroad line crossed north of town. Jesse Fell led the caravan of carriages to the site. And on the way, Fell, being the promoter that he was, could point to the Illinois Wesleyan College that had just been built on the prairie, a beautiful, pristine, red brick building. And Fell could talk about the principle of the Grove of Academe, the very special place that he had that was away from the terrible influences of a town like Peoria with whiskey and whatnot. This was its own very special site. Despite the cold and dampness of the afternoon, the committee conceded the site had possibilities. The next morning, after inspecting the Peoria sites and having lunch at the Peoria House, the board assembled in the county courthouse. Simeon Wright opened and read the various proposals made for the location of the normal school. Washington's bid in cash, land, and buildings is $20,000. Batavia, offers $45,000 in cash, land, and buildings. The city and county of Peoria offers cash and land estimated to be worth $80,000. The city of Bloomington and McLean County offers cash and land valued at $141,000. After an awkward pause, Wesley Sloan, board member from Golconda in Pope County, rose to his feet and proposed a resolution. Be it resolved that the normal university be located in the county of McLean near Bloomington on the 160 acres of land which is to be granted for the construction of the university. The location not to be final, however, until the total amount of the bid is fully guaranteed. Bloomington was elated. When Wilkins fell and uh, Lewis came back, uh, they had absolutely no problem getting guarantors. Uh, people came forward with $500 to $5,000 in cash, and people also came forward with land and cash for the normal university fund. Abraham Lincoln, acting as counsel for the state board, drew up the bond guaranteeing the deeds to the McLean County land subscription. Finally, things were starting to happen. The next order of business was choosing a principal. Jesse Fell and his Bloomington supporters wanted Horace Mann, a prominent educator from Massachusetts, for the job. Fell and Eberhard raised enough money to guarantee Mann's salary for five years. More than half of the state board agreed. Problem was, Mann had said the call had to be unanimous. He was simply too old to, to fight anymore. But the rejections to Mann member of the Peoria faction said it was a political necessity that only an Illinoisian be chosen. Bloomington, he said, got the school. We ought to be able to choose the principal. And he told Eberhardt, if you elect that damned abolitionist Horace Mann, we'll kill him. When Mann was informed of the situation, he wired Eberhardt asking that he no longer be considered for the principal of the normal university. When the board met, there was much discussion about hiring an out-of-state principal who had experience in the administration of a normal school. However, in the end, they did vote for the local man, and the vote was unanimous. Charles Hovey accepted the office of principal. Hovey had just turned 30 and was striking in appearance, tall and handsome with wavy, dark chestnut hair and quick, piercing eyes. He spoke with ease and made friends readily. 
the new principal took up his work with high hopes and determination. A normal school signifies a school where the principles of teaching are taught and where the art of teaching is exemplified and practiced. Education must be moral as well as physical or intellectual. The heart must be cared for as well as the mind and body. Architect Gurdon P. Randall presented plans for the normal school building. Jesse Fell's dream was coming true. The contractors, Soper and Mortimer, and the building committee decided the new building would occupy the north end of Joseph Payne's and Meshack Pike's 60-acre cornfield near the junction. Late in the afternoon, Jesse Fell returned with a pick and shovel and lifted the first cubic yard of earth from the site. The cornerstone was laid in the southeast corner of the new foundation. Principal Hovey spoke and promised that the building would be completed in a year. Fell was among those taking part in the ceremony. He deposited in the 12 by 12 by 6 inch time capsule a list of those who had contributed to the institution and then spoke briefly to those assembled. I can't stress enough the importance of free public education and the great need of the state for teachers that this institution will provide. I hope that Illinois State Normal University will develop into an institution of wider scope than an ordinary normal school. I envision a university with an agricultural school and a model farm, as well as a model school to educate those who desire it. Normal University opened in Majors Hall, a rented third floor over a general store at the corner of Front and East Streets in downtown Bloomington. 43 students enrolled. Suddenly, all construction activity on the new building stopped. A financial panic was sweeping the nation. The contractor started the job, worked at it, came for his first payment of $14,000 and nobody had money to pay him, so he walks off the job. And that's where the situation sat for the next two years. Well, in that period of time, Charles Hovey was out working to get money together to get his university going. And the town proprietors who were starting this town called North Bloomington, Charles Holder and Jesse Fell, were also scrambling because their town lots weren't going to be worth anything if the school that it was based upon wasn't there. By June of 59, they were able to get the financial hurdles uh, taken care of and got the program back on track again. On a warm June afternoon one year later, a class of 10 was graduated. Commencement ceremonies were held in the assembly room of the new building. <laughs>